Imagine this, a small office, a few engineers are sitting in front of their computers. They type in a single comment, nothing more than a few lines of text. And then suddenly, millions of people across the world can't open Facebook, can't watch YouTube, can't even reach their online bank. One small mistake in one small company, and the global internet fails. This is not science fiction, it has happened before. And guys, it can happen again anytime. So today, Let's talk about how the internet, which feels so big and unstoppable, can be broken by a small internet provider you have never even heard of. The first big story, Pakistan Telecom vs YouTube. Let's go back to the year 2008. YouTube was exploding in popularity, millions of videos, billions of views. For many people, it was already the center of the internet. But in Pakistan, the government was unhappy. The certain video had gone viral and officials wanted it blocked. So they ordered Pakistan Telecom, a local internet provider, to stop people inside the country from accessing YouTube. The engineers at Pakistan Telecom followed the order. They used a technical trick to say, hey, YouTube traffic should come to us instead. This was only supposed to work inside Pakistan. But here's the problem. Their system accidentally told the whole world that they own YouTube's pet. It was like shouting to the entire internet, send YouTube traffic here. And the internet listened. Within minutes, YouTube became unreachable for millions of people around the globe. Not just in Pakistan, but in Europe, Asia, and even parts of the United States. Think about it, a small company in one country by accident broke one of the biggest websites in the world. And here is the scary part. They didn't hack anything. They didn't attack YouTube. They just made a wrong announcement and the internet obeyed. Now you might ask, how is this even possible? The answer is a protocol called BGP. Don't worry, we won't go to too deep into tech. Let's explain it with a story. Imagine the internet is a huge city with billions of houses. Every website, every phone, every computer is one of those houses. Now, how do you send a letter to the right house? You need a postman. BGP is that postman. It doesn't create the letters. It doesn't write the messages. It just decides which road the letters should take to reach the house. But here's the catch. The postman doesn't check if someone is lying. If a small road says, hey, I am the fastest way to Google, the postman believes it. No questions asked. And that's exactly what happened with Pakistan Telecom. They told the world, we are the road to YouTube. The postman believed it and millions of letters went to the wrong address. This is why BGP is both amazing and dangerous. It keeps the internet running. Let's go back to the Pakistan Telecom story. Because the real drama was not just politics, it was BGP itself. Here is what happened in simple terms. YouTube has its own network like its own highway on the internet. Normally, if you want to visit YouTube, your traffic follows the IP routing path and reaches YouTube's network. Simple. But in 2008, Pakistan Telecom created what we call a BGP route leak. That means they stood up and said to the world, hey, if you want to reach YouTube, the best road is through us. Now, BGP is a bit trusting. It doesn't double check, it just believes what is told. And because of that, YouTube traffic from all over the world started going to Pakistan Telecom. The result, YouTube went dark for millions of users. Think of it like this. Imagine a small local post office in a town suddenly say, send all letters for the United States through me. The global postal system agrees. And within hours, that tiny office is drawing in letters, completely unable to deliver them. Meanwhile, no one else can reach the real addresses. That's exactly what happened to the internet that day. This was not a hack, it was not malware, it was just a wrong route announcement and it created chaos worldwide. So here is the question, could the Pakistan Telecom problem have been stopped back in 2008? The truth is yes, it could. You see, Pakistan Telecom was not directly connected to the whole internet. They had what we called upstream providers bigger networks that gave them access to the world. Those bigger networks could have looked at the announcement and said, wait, you are a small ISP. There is no way you are base road to YouTube. But they didn't. 
And the reason is simple. Back then, the internet was mostly built on trust. If someone said, I have the road, everyone else just believed it. Today, things are a little better. We now have tools like IRR, which is a basically a registry where ISPs write down which routes they are allowed to use. And we also have RPKI, which works like a digital signature to check if a route is real or fake. If this had been in place at that time, that fake YouTube path would probably have been blocked. It's a bit like airports. In the old days, you could walk in with just a paper ticket. No one checked much. But now you need ID, you go through security and everything is verified. The internet is slowly moving the same way from simple trust to stronger checks. Now let's talk about other big internet outages. The Pakistan telecom story was shocking, but it was not the only time the internet broke. It has happened many times. Let me tell you some other stories. Level 3 outage. 2015. There was a company called Level 3. Most people have never heard of it, but it was one of the biggest backbone providers in the world. What does backbone mean? Imagine the internet like a country. Small ISPs are like local roads. A backbone is like the highways that connect cities. If the highways closes, all the small roads suffers as well. Level 3 was especially big in the 2000s and 2010s. Later, it became the part of Centrelink and today it's called Lumen Technologies. The name changed, but the roles stay the same, carrying a huge part of the world's internet traffic. Back in 2015, inside Level 3's network, engineers make a wrong configuration. It was just a small mistake, but because their network connected to so many others, the error spread. Suddenly, many people in the United States couldn't connect. At home, people thought my Wi-Fi is broken. Maybe I need to restart my router. But the truth was the problem was far away, deep in the core of the internet. Cloudflare outage 2019. Now let's talk about Cloudflare. Cloudflare is a company that protects websites. It works like a bodyguard. If you visit a site, it loads fast and stay safe from attacks, Cloudflare might be helping behind the scenes. Millions of websites depend on it. But in June 2019, Cloudflare made a mistake. A bad configuration rule was added to their system. What does that mean? Think of like a wrong instruction given to the traffic light. The light turns red when it should be green and suddenly all the cars stop and even though there is no danger. Within minutes, big website went offline. Not because hackers attacked them, not because of a power failure, but because of a small human mistake. This shows a hard truth. Sometimes the biggest danger to the internet is not a hacker in the dark. It's just someone typing the wrong thing at the wrong time. Facebook outage 2021. And then the most famous story, the Facebook blackout in 2021. For more than six hours, Facebook, Instagram and WhatsApp completely disappeared. Billions of people, not millions, billions couldn't connect. Businesses lost money, families couldn't talk, for many, it felt like the world stopped. The reason, again, BGP. Specifically, a BGP flow spec, but it is the subject of another video. The problem with the BGP rule basically removed the Facebook from the global routing tables. What does that mean? Imagine the internet is a map. Facebook was simply erased from that map. So, when you tried to open Facebook, your computer looked at the map, but the roads to Facebook were gone. It was like the city never existed. These stories show us something important. The internet feels huge, but at the same time it is fragile. The small ISP in Pakistan, a backbone provider in the United States, or even a tech giant like Facebook. One mistake in their system can be felt around the entire world. So, what do we learn from all of this? First, the internet is not a single thing. It is not controlled by one company or one government. It is thousands of networks stitched together with trust. BGP works on trust and trust can be broken. Second, small actors can have a big impact. Pakistan Telecom was not a global power, but their mistake was global. Third, even the giants can fail. Facebook, Cloudflare, Google and Amazon all had outages. All of them have been brought down not by hackers, but by their own internal mistakes or software bugs. So next time you open YouTube or scroll through Instagram or send money online, remember this. Behind the screen, behind the apps, there are some fragile routers and protocols. The day a small ISP broke the global internet was not the last time. It was only a warning. The question is, are we ready for the next one?